Hello, this is Tom for Tabletop Taproom. Today we're doing the evolution of lycanthropy in D&D. I was working on my series for magic uh, items in D&D, and it was digging into swords, it's particularly after watching a Jill the Lawyer video. If you don't know Jill the Lawyer, check him out. Um, he is a character. He really is a character, and he really is a lawyer. <laughs> And he likes D and D, and he does D and D videos. Uh, so uh, I like Joe. I've met him at Historicon. Uh, seems like a great guy. Uh, we really need to get around to having a beer and shooting the breeze at some point. So um, yeah, saw his video on high intelligent, high ego magic swords, and I was like, oh yeah. Something for me to think about. And as I was digging into the topic a little bit more for my video, I thought I've got to do some research on lycanthropy before I say this thing over here I want to say. And so that led to this video. So um, that's what we're doing today. And so I just want to say thanks for watching the video. Thanks to my subscribers. You guys are great. And don't forget that like, subscribe, and bell icon. Help me build the channel. Moving right along. d d Dungeons and Dragons. It's had lycanthropes in it since day one, including Zero Edition D&D, which actually had them as a wargaming piece that would be put on the table as a, a wargaming unit in a game of chainmail. Um, and so technically, yes, lycanthropes have been part of Dungeons and Dragons from the very beginning. Yes, Gandalf, I was there when Gandalfs were when uh, lycanthropes were introduced to D&D. So zero edition D&D. Now I've got these, um, I should put out some caveats. I don't own all the rules. Did this research, I don't own all, all the rules. I actually ended up using fifth edition SRD, 3.5 edition SRD, because in those editions, I do not own all the books. And um, in fifth edition, that was by choice. Third edition, that was actually by choice because I was just being a player. I was just getting back into it and new player, and I just need the player's handbook. I'll play a fighter. I'm not going to do anything complicated. And so that's what I did. Uh, I believe I played a fighter and I played a monk. I didn't bother with spell casting or anything fancy uh, just to get ease back into the water, uh, as it were, with 3.5. I did not consult third edition at all. 3.0, ignored it. And uh, that was by choice as well. Because uh, I remember way back when I was joining that D&D group around a kitchen table, and I'm like, why are we, why 3.5 edition? And they explained it to me, and I don't know if they explained it good, but I just remember thinking, this sounds stupid. Absolutely sounds stupid. So um, my Prejudice is third edition was stupid. <laughs> I've played 3.5. Um, I've played four. I've played fifth now. Uh, I have not played second edition, but I did consult some second edition PDFs to get my information. So that's my caveat. Uh, zero edition, I bought the books on drive through and downloaded them. So I have those. So this is a combination of consulting real books in the real world and PDFs on the computer. Zero edition D&D. Let's move into the review. Zero edition D&D had lycanthropes as a wargaming unit put on the table. So therefore, who it affects is an NA. Uh, how do you get it? Unknown, not discussed. And the uh, I have an implications column here. Talk about the implications for what it, the rule on how you get lycanthropy. What are the implications? Because uh, I think those were important to think about, and they stood out to me. Uh, there, there are no implications for zero D and D um, and PC versus NPC. That was another consideration. Does the PC remain under the control of the player, or does it become an NPC in game once lycanthropy is full blown? Uh, that is an NA. For zero. Uh, the cure probably lycanthropy is cured through cure disease spell. And that is because I found a statement in zero edition DD where it said that magical diseases could be cured with a cure disease spell. 
did not specify lycanthropy, but yeah, we could. I would rule based off of that statement. Sure. Have at it. Now, um, and I have a final column here called Belladonna. Belladonna gets uh, introduced in first edition AD and D, but for now it is an NA. There's no comment on it in zero D and D. Next up is Holmes, the Holmes Basic, and um, it specifies anyone, uh, human or humanoid, doesn't matter who you are. And oh, let me Holmes comment. Holmes' statement on lycanthropy is the most concise. Well written, simple, just boom, without complicating things. Statement on lycanthropy you could find in any version of TNT whatsoever, bar none. End of statement. I will argue with you on this. I will die on that hill. <laughs> Plant the flag. I'm here to die on this hill. Holmes is the most concise, simplest statement on lycanthropy. I, I kid you not. Uh, but anyone can get it. Uh, and it and it it happens at fifty percent wounds, fifty percent of hit points in wounds from a lycanthrope. The implication is high hit points when fighting a lycanthrope are an advantage. So you want your tanks to engage the lycanthrope, your dwarf, your um, human fighter. You want the, the your tanks have to do it. You do not want the mage going toe to toe with a lycanthrope. Because bad things going to happen to him. Well, first of all, possibly death because he's got low hit points. But also, yeah, if he survives, he's not just farting fireballs. <laughs> he's nibbling on you during the night. So, you know, and, well, that could be fun. PC versus NPC, it's unknown. There's not a clear statement in the homes. And then uh, the cure would be cure disease spell by a cleric, no level specified. I'm going to point out, cure disease is a third level cleric spell, and it should be castable by a sixth level cleric. Uh, Belladonna, again, is an NA because this is too early in the history of D&D, &D, uh, and that's not introduced till 1E. Moldve Basic, um, my first edition of D&D &D that I cut my teeth on. Humans only can be infected with lycanthropy. Um, humanoids, your elves, your halflings, your dwarves, they die when it goes its full course. Uh, again, 50% of your hit points in wounds from a lycanthrope. And again, the implication is high hit points. You want your tanks going toe-to-toe, -to -toe, and uh, you become an NPC. If you do not get cured in the specified time period, you become an NPC when lycanthropy is full bore. Uh, the cure is a cure disease spell, and at this time it's specified by the that it's an eleventh level cleric. Uh, why eleventh? No idea. Just they specified eleventh level. Belladonna again is an NA until the next edition comes out, which actually was already coming out in part, which is first edition AD and D. It uh, said again, humans only, humanoids die, 50% of hit points and wounds, uh, so high hit points is an advantage, and it gives concerning NPC or PC for the player character with lycanthropy, it gives contradictory statements. You could make an argument to go both ways on this, okay? Just You could just be by like ly ly lycanthropy if you want. Uh, it, it's like you become an NPC or you just don't want to become an NPC. It, it, it you know, it, it is what it is. It's, it's contradictory. Um, so, uh, the cure is cure disease spell for, but it's 12th level cleric. So it went from 11th to 12th. It's going to go back down to 11th in a minute. <laughs> uh, but Belladonna is introduced. Um, to you know the equipment list you can take a sprig of belladonna it is poisonous but there are no complications yet and if you take it within an hour of being bitten by a lycanthrope um you it's 25 percent chance there's no infection however it's generally 
that you play this as a um, like player doesn't know type thing. But I guess they would know if they read the rules and said, well, geez, I took over 50%. I have um, I have 20 hit points, and I've taken 12 in damage from a werewolf. I guess that means I have like anthropy. They would know. Um, but generally, it's like this thing of you play it like you don't know that you have it type of thing. Um, so if you take the, the Belladonna, you know, and I think most players – would just be like, yeah, we're going to add a sprig of belladonna and, you know, right away we, all right, we're biting our wounds from the combat with the werewolf and going to eat the, be the belladonna, you know, and hopefully I don't start changing in a month. So uh, that's first edition. Beck me followed first edition and uh, B-E-C-M-I, Beck me, humans only. Uh, again, humanoids die, 50% hit points to get it. So high hit points, you become an NPC when um, Lycanthropy does its full course. Now, the Cure is a Cure Disease spell yet again, this time by an 11th level cleric. So we've gone from an addition where I would just say, fine, 6th level cleric can cast the spell, to one that said, no, it's got to be 11th, another says 12th, and now we've gone back down to 11th. So it's all over the place. And there is no mention of Belladonna in the Beckme. That leads us to second edition, which was a little bit of departure. And the wording in the second edition rules gets a little elitist. Like we don't want we don't want lycanthropy to be something you cast one spell and it's gone. Okay, so it, you cast one spell and you make a saving throw and it's gone. I don't know. I don't know what the difference is. I don't know how that has brought in more ver ver verisimilitude into the game, made it more real. Oh, that's more real now because he's cast one spell and did a saving throw. Uh, but that's how that's going to go. Uh, so now it's uh, second edition. It's character. It doesn't specify humans only. So anyone can get lycanthropy. So it's Oprah has shown up in D, D and you can be a lycanthrope and you can be like everybody gets, in the studio audience gets lycanthrope um and it's it's not as dangerous in this edition because it's a one percent chance that you will get it per hit point so if you took six points of damage in a battle with a lycanthrope it's a six percent chance those are good odds i'll take those odds almost any day six percent chance sure um, you know, bad day if you get it, but yeah, 6%. I'm rolling that. That's a, that's a, that's a good roll right there. Um, even 10, uh, you know, 20, you start getting up to one fifth of a chance you're going to get it. But on those low numbers, yeah, I'll go with that. So it's not as dangerous. Um, and you're only an NPC while in wear form. So you, you lose agency on your character, but only when you are in wear form, that's when you lose complete control. Um, and it, again, it's remove curse. It's not cure disease anymore. It's remove curse, and this grants a saving throw. Uh, but I believe you have to be remove curse while you're in wear form. So they have to kind of cage you so that you hang around and receive the spell, and then you get the saving throw. Um, so, and then there's no mention that I could find a second edition for Belladonna 3.5, uh, says character. So again, everyone, uh, any hit from a true lycanthrope, there's two types of lycanthropes now. So you have infected lycanthropes and true lycanthropes and only true lycanthropes can pass on the infection. And these are like, you know. How do you become a true lycanthrope? Well, you become a true lycanthrope if your mommy lycanthrope and your daddy lycanthrope got together, did the birds and the bees, and out came you. You had to be born with it. Um, and you can pass on the infection, but the infected lycanthrope cannot pass on the infection. It makes no sense to me. I would just house rule something a little different on that. Um, so... Any hit from a true lycanthrope requires a DC 15 save. So you must, each hit 
you must make a DC 15 save or you're infected. And, uh, you know, the implication is, is you don't know what the save result is. So I guess the game master is rolling that save. So hope the game master likes you. <laughs> That's an implication. Um, if the PC is aware they have the disease, they can voluntarily change. So under those circumstances, looking at that statement that if the player character is aware that they have lycanthropy, they can make the voluntary change. It says to me that the NPC, they're an NPC if they change into a lycanthrope, but if the player character, not the player, but the player character becomes aware of their condition, they can then make roles to make voluntary changes. That implies that the player character can be played as a lycanthrope. That's, the, that's how I read that. Um, so the, the cure is remove curse or break enchantment. Two spells now, either one, can be cast uh, while in wear form, and it allows a save and a belladonna use within, I think it's an hour, um, allows a save, but it's also toxic and it has complications. Fourth edition is the biggest departure. Uh, it does say humanoid, so again, it's anyone, and it's any hit from like uh, from a lycanthrope gives you lycanthropy. Any hit, boom. This is probably one of the most dangerous um, ways of treating lycanthropy in all of D and D. Um, it's my, my take on it. But the player character is just played with lycanthropy because the fourth edition rules are it's a spectrum of saving throws. You fail, it gets worse. It has more effects. You fail, it gets worse and has more effects. You pass the saving throw, it goes down. Okay? And then when you're at the lowest level, I presume if you pass the saving throw, you, you shake it off. It's like, um, you know, go get some amoxicillin. You'd be all right, buddy. <laughs> um, so you just save and throw that crap away. You know, oh, you got like cancerope? Oh, just save and throw it away. You know, it's like, uh, what's wrong with him? He's got like cancer. And he's like, I got better. Um, yeah, I, I hate that. I absolutely hate, despite the fact that it is probably one of the most dangerous, most contractable forms of lycanthropy is fourth edition. Uh, I hate this. I hate these rules. Um, fifth edition. Fifth edition, what most people know. So it says humanoid. So it's humans, humanoids. So it's your elves, your dwarves, or whatever, your tabaxi, whatever have you. Anybody can get it. Um, and it's you. the way you get it is parentage. You were born. You can opt to be born to lycanthrope parents, um, you know, or one wound with a failed constitution saving throw. So one wound, again, um, so as to the, you know, it's one of the easiest forms to get, and the PC can actually embrace it. In fact, there are rules in 5th edition for embracing lycanthropy. Now the cure, it was, really it was really unclear, really unclear how you cure lycanthropy. I'm presuming it's cure disease or remove curse or something along those lines. It was not very clear, um, but there are detailed rules for embracing it, which I found funny. One was not clear, but it was like, oh yeah, but, but why would you want to get rid of it anyways? Just embrace it, just embrace the lycanthropy. And uh, there is no mention, uh, again, the same uh, for Belladonna, same for fourth edition. I think I skipped that column. So, um, like, Canthropy went from this thing that you would get it after a good battle royale with a Lycanthrope. It was kind of dangerous because your player character had, was on a clock. There was a ticking clock. Your player character was going to become an NPC. You were going to have to roll up a new character. It was very dangerous. It was like death. 
a player character has effectively died if you become a lycanthrope. It's out of the game. You're out of the game. You've got to start over. And the way Dungeons and Dragons has gone is no death. Death saving throws, high hit points. You can't die. You're going to, you know, um, Highlander. Who wants to live forever? Apparently, modern D&D players do. It's kind of like when we had those uh, computer games and you would be like, about to enter a battle, so you would save the game, and if the battle didn't go the way you want, you just backed up. It, it, that quickly became unfun. You know, it quickly became unfun to play that way, where you, you couldn't lose from a battle. And, you know, you just quickly learn that. But apparently the population of D&D players does not learn that, but they 5th edition is the most popular edition. COVID has certainly helped blow it up um, some of the uh, some of the recent uh, stranger things some of the more recent um, news media has made it much more popular and mainstream so yeah DD has become more touchy-feely embrace your lycanthropy it's not deadly you can be a piece you your PC can be a lycanthrope you can be born with it if you want but in the old days, the older editions, it was deadly. You could lose your character. And I kind of think that's a good way to go. I kind of think having it be dangerous really is a good way to go. I definitely did not like fourth editions. Save and throw that stuff away. You know, it's like that old commercial. Going to wash that man right out of my Going to wash that lycanthropy right out of my player character. There's no consequence for it. It just, whatever. Um, just make the saving throw and move on. I, uh, I didn't like. I don't. I didn't like it. I definitely like the older ones. And I, and as for the fifty percent damage of fifty percent of your hit points and damage, they had to come up with a mechanical game mechanism that would trigger it. And I really think this is a. I think this is a good one. You might say, well, that's not very realistic. Well, that, not, none of this is realistic, honestly. Not even armor classes, you know, the, the numbers attached. It's just a made-up thing. But we use the rules, and we agree to use the rules to adjudicate something that's for the fun. And so you just use it and move on. So I, I kind of like the older editions of it. And uh, so this has been my video on the evolution of lycanthropy. I may have gotten some things wrong because, again, open caveat, I don't actually possess all the books. Some of them are PDFs. Some, um, you know, I had to consult the 3.5 and the 5th edition SRD uh, for some of this information. And, of course, I completely ignored 3.0 edition. Stupid. Um, as per my prejudice. <laughs> so um, if I've made a mistake, apologize. Please go ahead and leave a comment. I welcome the correction. Um, and, you know, what is your favorite version of doing lycanthropy? I kind of like the older, more deadly stuff myself, but maybe you've got an argument for it to go in a different way. Please leave a comment. So, uh, it's Tom for Tabletop Tap Room signing out. Thanks for watching the video, and don't forget to hit that like, subscribe, bell icon, and keep on playing, even if you are a werewolf.